Hi, I'm Eileen Roach, founder of Designs and Machine Embroidery. Happy St. Patrick's Day to everyone. I'm excited to be here today to talk about reversible piecing for small or large blocks and really how to do the, you know, quilt and piece technique or quilt as you go, as it's known. It's an easy way to get blocks finished, you know, and then pieced into an actual quilt. Thanks for the happy St. Patrick's Day comments. Um, you know, I'm an Irish girl, right? Eileen's a very Irish name. My mother's maiden name was O'Brien. So you would think I would be wearing green. My mother would not be happy with me. I can tell you that. So sorry, mom. I'll do better next year, right? I just never have, a, I don't have any green in my wardrobe. Imagine that. So what, we're, what today's class is brought to you by, let's go ahead and pop up PowerPoint so you can take a look, but it's brought, brought to you by the Jumbo Hoop Guard. And the Jumbo Hoop Guard is a device that snaps onto Snap Hoop Monster and holds, creates a barrier for fabric, quilt sandwiches, terry cloth towels, whatever large item you're working on from falling into the sewing field. And we came up with Jumbo Hoop Guard because many people were asking, can I use two standard hoop guards on a large hoop? You know, these hoops have gotten bigger over the years, right? And at first we thought, sure, you could, but you know, when you have a piece of metal, metal attached to a mag magnet, it um, diminishes the magnetic force, right? So having, multiple hoop guards attached to a hoop. It's not that great. Let's pop over to the overhead and I'll give you a closer idea of what I'm talking about. So here is a large quilt that I have, it's already quilted, but just to show you, here's the attachment right here, um, close to me. And opposite the attachment is the hoop guard. And it is just a metal barrier that snaps See, it has a right angle, and this portion, the lower portion, snaps underneath the magnetic frame, and it just stays in place. Now, our original concept, you know, was to make this lower portion the same width uh, as the barrier wall. But then we realized, well, gee, you're going to lose a lot of magnetism of these really great, strong magnetic top frames. So we redesigned and expanded the barrier, but not the base, which, you know, it's just a great way uh, to design an, an improvement. And, you know, you would only use this large hoop guard, jumbo hoop guard on six by 10, seven by 12, larger hoops than six by 10. It will fit on a five by seven, but it's probably overkill. You know, it, it's not going to diminish the magnetic ability of that hoop but it could very well um, just be too long for the fabric that you're working on. So that's um, the product that's brought to us today. Whenever I'm quilting with my embroidery machine, I always have a hoop guard attached to uh, my magnetic top frame. And in fact, I leave my hoop guard right on the magnetic top frame when I store my hoop. You know, I only, you, I have one embroidery machine at home that can use, um, you know, I have a multi-needle, so, and a, and a single needle machine. So I, I have one set of hoops for the single needle machine. So I have my hoop guard attached to my favorite hoop, which is probably, well, favorite hoop of the moment, right? This week it was the nine and a half by 14. It could be an eight by eight. It could be a, uh, the giant 10 by 16. But anyway, that, that's what I do. And I just store it right there. And Judy Whitlock, you have the small one. The small one's pretty good, you know, but as these hoops get bigger and bigger, you might find 
that it's easier to, um, it just gives you more security, more of a barrier to hold back that quilt roll. And Cheryl Radio, you um, you just finished your edge to edge quilting hoop um, with Monster Hoop, the edge guard, amazing. And her unfinished pile will diminish. I love hearing that, absolutely, because that's the truth. When you have the right tools, like a snap hoop monster or a uh, and a hoop guard, you're gonna you don't have any more fear or dread of quilting with your embroidery machine. It's all about managing that large task, right? And it is a big task for sure. So let's see. Um, and not a brat. So she had the small ones. Yeah, we all had the regular hoop guards, the smaller one for sure, because that's the only one that was out for almost a decade. And it was just this year that we uh, introduced the jumbo hoop guard. So you're not, you're not behind. You're right up to date with all the good stuff, right? And let's see. Um, Susan Walter, your mom was Molly Brennan and you are wearing a light shade of green in her honor. Well, she'd be proud for sure. Yeah, I am actually 100% Irish, so I really should be ashamed. But, you know, in Ireland, they don't really celebrate St. Patrick's Day. He was a saint. So, you know, if you're going to celebrate, you go to church. Okay, that's a whole other topic. So how about if we move on to what today's topic is about, which is quilt as you go and reversible piecing. So I drew a couple illustrations for you to show you a great way to quilt as you go on an embroidery machine where you can conserve some fabric many times. Now this illustration just shows you simple stipple design, right? And so you probably wouldn't really do that. You'd be doing something more decorative, like a beautiful qu uh, embroidery quilting design or maybe an applique design, something in that fashion. And I have several choice uh, selections to show you. But what I like to do is um, take my fabric and the back, the back of the fabric, place that right side down, making my quilt sandwich like normal. The uh, batting in the middle, block fabric right side up. And then I hoop from left to right or right to left, spacing those blocks two inches apart. And then when I pull them out of the, uh, when I finish quilting that strip, I have, you know, three, maybe four or five blocks, depending on how wide of a block that you're working on. And then my blocks are done. All I have to do is trim them and then piece them together with the reversible piecing. It's really awesome. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the technique or some of the uh, examples of reversible piecing. And uh, I kind of have a lot of quilts here, so just bear with me a moment while I unveil. Okay, so here is half inch reversible piecing, right? So that's the width of the finished sashing. So I quilted the, this strip. This was actually multiple embroidery designs, you know, stitched repeatedly in a pattern, right? Isn't this adorable? These flying geese and so forth. I love this little table runner. And, you know, I used a mix of sashing fabrics. I have pink and blue and a solid green and so forth. But here's this very same quilt block designs. Now they are larger stars, larger windmill, larger uh, flying geese over here. And uh, because they're larger blocks, I used a larger sashing. So this sashing is a one inch finished width. And so that's what you'll want to take into consideration. Which would you use? It depends on the scale of the block or maybe the scale of the print, whatever it is that you are, uh, you know, the project that you're working on. So we'll get these out of the way. And then I can show you, here's our stipple butterfly. This is, was such a popular quilt when this first came out. And again, this uses that reversible piecing. Now I'm going to flip it over and let you see the back. And you can see the back also has re, uh, sashing on the back. So each block was quilted all the way through with um, batting, block fabric on the top, backing fabric, and then sashed all three layers, sashing on the back, sashing on the front. And that you know wiggle stitch that you see here is decorative stitching that was used to you know just decorate the sashing. 
not necessary, but can add a uh, lovely element to a quilt. It may, if we had done it in contrasting thread here, you would have seen it a lot better. So this um, kind of beautiful fuchsia cranberry color accents all of the batiks that are inside the butterfly blocks and really frames each block. And it's an, an integral part of the design of the quilt. <clears throat> here is another one. Now, here's my embroidery design right here, this long rectangle. You can't see my other hand, so let's see. So it goes from here, you still can barely see it. It goes from here to here. That's one block. And then I repeated them, butted up the design end to end. So I actually quilted that whole block, and this is 60 inches long. And I made these multiple strips, all these multiple strips, and then piece them with the same fabric sashing. So to the appearance, when this is on the bed, this looks like a whole cloth quilt with a little bit of embellishment. But really these were done very manageably in a back, this is an old quilt. So this was probably done in a seven by 12 hoop with continuous repeats. Now, as we take a look at the other side, you'll see that's where you can see the real strips because um, not only did I use different fabrics for the strips, but also for uh, the, the sashing. So it's just one continuous strip. And this is a fast way to get a big quilt finished is, you know, on an embroidery machine. If you are using the whole uh, embroidery machine to decorate and actually build the blocks, like this is our stipple uh, geometrics. And so what that means is this embroidery design comes in a collection and the first color is the actual stipple, that really pretty meandering stitch. The next color is an outline. And then you lay down your applique fabric, stitch the decorative, you know, uh, echo quilting inside and you trim later when it comes out of the hoop. So that's very, very fast quilting in the hoop. Sometimes you want to piece the sashing. Like in this beautiful seashell quilt, this is one of my faves. So I wanted the accent, I wanted the sashing to really kind of act like an accent. So in the center of the quilt, I pieced the, the uh, yellow and the blue. And yet on the other sections, they're just solid pieces of fabric. So you really have a lot of flexibility. You can, you know, decorate these and you know select your own fabrics to determine what kind of other element you'll add to the reversible piecing so let's see kathy you have a question kathy matuszewski how do i get to see this presentation kathy i don't know where you are but maybe hit refresh on your screen and the video will come up because we're live and we are done doing and we are uh you know broadcasting and uh, not a brat. Is this done with a my quilt embe embellisher? It is not. That was all digitized um, with, uh, you know, I did, they were professionally digitized. So they are actually embroidery collections. The butterfly quilt, the seashell quilt, and the geometrics are uh, sold separately. They're, you know, and instructions on how to actually make the quilt. Oh, and look at that fun border. I love this border. So this is continuous applique. The background fabric is the white and the applique is the blue. And in that collection, I teach you how to hoop one long piece of white fabric and then add this continuous applique as you hoop and rehoop. This is 50 inches wide, I think. So this was done at that time, probably on a seven by 12 hoop. So several hoopings for that, but you can do it. And today it's even easier. Our hoops are even bigger. Okay. So let me see if there's any, you like the seashell quilt. I know I love the seashell quilt. So sweet. I just want to catch up with questions before we go on to actually show the step out. So I'm going to sew today. Ah, I'm not scared. I can do it. <laughs> yeah, the seashells. Everybody loves the seashells and the butterfly quilt. That was a house favorite. I'll tell you, we published that many moons ago and boy, Everybody loved it. Whoever saw it, they just loved it. Okay, so here's an example of, now I just did a small example, but here is uh, on the overhead cam. So here's some pretty blocks, right? Isn't that a pretty embroidery design? 
Uh, and so these would make great cornerstones on a larger quilt or, you know, in a border or something like that. So I space these, leaving at least two inches in between. And then I can cut these into blocks that are already quilted. Now, on this instance, there's no backing. And that's okay. We'll get to that later. We can trim this down and uh, I'll show you how to add sashing for that. So I'm going to set that aside just for now. And we'll start with this big block, two big, two big blocks that um, I've pieced. And this is that same geometric design. So of course we have all that pretty stipple and then the decorative applique in the center of both. Now I wanna piece these together. I've already trimmed my blocks. I'm gonna bring this up nice and close to the camera. And I wanna to illustrate to you, let me get some scissors. I want to illustrate to you that the edge of the quilting is here. So I placed the half inch line on a quilter's ruler right along that stitching and then trimmed off the excess. That's how I got these nice square blocks because the digitizing is square. I mean, I know that, right? And you, well, you can't really see on the back because it's a busy print, but it is. So if I just place my quilter's ruler, which I can do right here and show you, if I just place that on the half inch mark. So I'm aligning that half inch mark with the edge of the quilting. And then I slice that off. I'm going to get a nice half inch seam allowance. And the half inch seam allowance is going to give me a one inch finished sashing. So let's take a look at that. Um, I have my two blocks, both with half inch seam allowance. I've cut my top sashing strip two inches wide. So you will cut your sashing strip four times the seam allowance. So seam allowance is a half inch sashing on the front and then sashing on the back, right sides together, right sides together. And I'm just gonna get a clip to hold that together. I should have had that out. You're gonna bear with, I hope you'll bear with me today. I've um, kind of had a little stressful morning. So, but here we are, we're doing it. We're happy to be here. Okay, I'll just get, don't you just love those green clip, green, whatever color they are? They are just so handy. Okay, today they're red, red's fine. So I like to use these instead of pins, especially on all these layers. It's just so handy to just clip them together. So I'm making sure that my sashing edge is aligned with my, all my sash, my bow sashing edges and that whole quilt sandwich. Okay, so now we're gonna go to the machine and we're going to stitch with a half inch seam allowance. So one way I could do that is to stitch, um, use the all kinds of fancy stuff on the machine, or I could just eyeball it, right? So I have the wrong foot attached, so let's go ahead and attach the um, standard embroidery foot. And I have, um, Stitch number three, which is the center position, and I will just align that edge with of the foot with the edge of the sashing and stitch. And you know, on this machine, there's a laser, there's all kinds of fancy stuff that I could have used to align that. And now that I have that sewn, yeah, see, that's a little too far away. So. You know, sometimes we all make mistakes like that, right? There's too much seam allowance showing. So no worries. On this technique, you can just go back and restitch it. So I'm going to move my uh, needle position over and that'll give me a nice solid half inch. It's nice to align the edge of the fabric with the edge of the foot that can keep you in place and then actually select your seam allowance by moving the position of the needle. Okay, so I think that's a little better. Yeah, almost nailed it. All right, let's go back over to the um, overhead and we're gonna press this open so you can get a good understanding of how all that's gonna work. 
So right now they are just sewn together. And what I want to do is I want to press open only the top, just the top, because I'm going to add my next block to the top. So what's important at this point is to make sure that when I place this block onto the sashing strip, that it is aligned with the top and bottom of the first block. So that's key. So I often just lay it right on top and concentrate on the top and bottom and then slide it over so that it meets that edge of the sashing. And then we can get our clips and clip that together. Now, when we sew from this side, I can actually see, you probably can't because I used thread that matches that base fabric pretty well, but I can, uh, you know, I can see my quilting, right? So as long as I stitch fairly close to that, I know that I'll have my um, half inch seam allowance. Okay, and then here we go. Back over at the machine, we'll lower that presser foot, keeping an eye on the stippling, making sure I'm just kissing it or barely kissing it. You know, this is a very forgiving technique and it's so easy to do. Okay, cut those threads back over. We gotta press again. And um, boy, what do we do before without these nice little handy irons, right? Here's the magic right now. When we pull that over to each other, they meet. Those seam allowances meet in the middle. So there's actually batting in here. It's fairly heavy. Well, not heavy, it's just how it should be. So then we're going to take our back sashing and fold that over and press it down really well. And I like to turn it so that it's this edge is facing me and then I'm going to turn up just about a quarter inch seam allowance on the back sashing only. I'm going to turn that up and then when I press that over in that fashion and I top stitch from the front, it's going to work. Now I have another little trick to show you that you might really like and I learned this from my friend Joni Zyre Poole who um, so with Elmer's glue, you can do a quick little tack down of that seam allowance. That'll be just enough to hold it in place. You just want to run a bead, not really heavy, you know, not a big messy glob of glue. And that seam allowance is folded down. And then we just finger press that in place. You can even apply a little heat. It doesn't matter. It doesn't mind the heat. And now when I go to top stitch, I'm going to top stitch right or edge stitch in the ditch right along here. And that's going to catch that um, sashing in the back. So let's go do that. And I'm not actually stitching on the glue, although I don't think it would really matter. It might, it might. Okay, so I'm gonna switch feet because I, ha <clears throat> I have this foot number, which is R on the baby lock and brother system. and it is, uh, I believe it's a blind hemming foot, but I love to use it for stitching in the ditch. So I place that guide right along the ditch, lower my presser foot. Now I want to make sure that the position of my needle is going to uh, just be a little left of that guide. Just a little bit, just a tad. So I'm actually at um, 3.0. I think I'll go to 2.7. And that just is just to the left of the guide. And so I focus on where this guide is placed, right? It's just grabbing, stitching right there in the ditch. And we'll cut that. And then, come on, pray with me together. We turn over, it's caught that whole edge. Yep, awesome. Okay, then we can do the same thing on the other side. If you, although you don't have to, I mean, because it's secure now, it's, you know, that's a seam on the back. So you don't have to worry about that. But if you want everything to coordinate, then you would do the same thing on the left-hand side. And this would also be our next pass, if we want to, would be a decorative stitch. So 
you have to change feet to do that. Maybe we'll just select the serpentine if we can find that easily. There's so many pretty stitches on this machine, right? And because I'm an embroiderer, I don't often experiment and play with them, but this is 219. And I'll lengthen that, make it a little wider, so uh, a little longer, less of a curve. You'll see, elongate that curve. And I don't really have a very pretty thread here, but this would be a good place to do it. So I'm just centering the foot in the sashing and adding this decorative stitch right down the middle. And again, you know, curved stitches like serpentines are forgiving stitches. So if you're a beginner at this, that's a great stitch to select because if you're off a little bit, the eye will never know. So then back at the overhead cam, uh, Back of the overhead cam, then we just are going to trim off that excess sashing. And there we have our blocks are done. Isn't that easy? Oh my goodness, it's so much fun. And now, you know, this is like the beginning of a placemat, maybe a bag. I mean, what a nice little cosmetic bag that would make, right? I, I mean, I'm almost there. All I have to do is add a zipper at the top, you know, decide how big my bottom's going to be. Well, that's another class. But anyway, isn't that fun? Okay, so let's see. Then I have would like to show you what you would do with quarter inch. So we'll come back to that. Maybe I'll answer some questions first. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm dragging my director all over the place, Sam. He doesn't know where to follow me. So let's see. You like the white quilt hanging behind your machine. Oh yes, the weightless quilter, that's quite beautiful. Mm -hmm. And let's see, there's also, oh, Joanne Banco says there is an adjustable version of the blind hem, hem foot that's really great for so many things. I don't have that, looks like that, sounds like something to, um, to experiment and explore, right? Let's see, I, but I love that. Stitch on the glue, I mean, it's never seemed to matter at all. Right, it doesn't matter at all. Elmer's glue, no need to buy the expensive little bottle of glue. Oh, no, Elmer's glue is fine. It's fine, yeah. Let's see. Uh, oh, and Diana mullins Atkins, do you use a um, Elmer's glue stick at this point? And I have used them for sure for many different things. Uh, I just find that... Um, because I don't use it on a regular basis, like every day or, you know, very frequently that the glue sticks dry up on me, but the Elmer's glue bottle doesn't because you can close the cap and it stays, you know, nice and fresh. Now, when I'm doing collage work, um, then I would use a glue stick because I don't want, you know, wet glue on that. Let's see. So let's see, Wendy, uh, you want to know what books and patterns highlight this technique? This technique is in Machine Embroidered Quilting in Eight Easy Lessons by Eileen Roach, by me. It's also in um, all of our stipple collections. So if you go to dzgns.com and go to projects or embroidery designs, um, you'll find all those pretty quilts that I showed you, the butterfly, the seashell. They're each individual uh, collections with all the embroidery designs in it and also that technique. So there's instructions that once you download the designs, you would um, read the instructions and that technique is in there. And Star, you love that technique. It's so easy. It really is. It's very forgiving. And what I like about it is, you know, you quilt first, right? And, and so, but it's all done then. And then you're just putting it together with those uh, sashing strips, super easy. And the sashing can be bold like I'm about to show you with some uh, bright pink and, or it can be, you know, kind of dissolve into the background by using the same fabric as the blocks. Yeah. And let's see, Tracy, you think it might be great for t-shirt quilts? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, you know, <laughs> Kathy thought her glue stick was lip gloss. Oh, that's not a good day, huh, Kathy? Gee, yeah, mm, I wonder. Yeah, and let's see. Sherry, you, Hernandez, you re, a good refresher. You remember seeing this on Nancy Zeman yet, many years ago. I did teach this on Nancy Zeman in 2017 and um, I think previously also. Yeah, but it's a technique that I loved. And when I showed it to her, she most certainly loved it also. 
Okay, so now let's go over and talk about how, you know, the quarter inch is a little different. The math is going to be a little different. So, um, and then we'll piece two rows together. So here we have uh, quilt blocks. Boy, we're getting pretty busy here, huh? Let me get rid of this orange. We don't probably need that panel. So here we have our, our four quilt blocks. Aren't I a fabulous micro piecer? Aren't you so impressed? Don't be, <laughs> because they are, it's actually a cheater quilt, but it's so cute, so cute. So anyway, I've already quilted it. I have a really fun black and white print on the back, you know, to kind of pick up on that black and white that's in the um, pattern. And I have pieced my two, my four blocks together into two rows. Now this sashing is a half inch. And um, to start, to get a half inch, finished sashing, we're going to start with a one inch width sashing, and that will fold down to a half inch shown. So remember, if you're going to have a half inch sashing, sashing showing, then you want your seam allowance to be a quarter inch. It's um, seam allowance is four times the strip of the fabric divided by two gives you the finished size of the sashing. Or you could work it the opposite way. You know, I just want a half inch finished sashing. Okay, then cut your seam allowance a quarter inch because that's just half of the sashing. Well, how big is your strip? Well, your strip is going to be four times the, the seam allowance because you're going to go a, half, a quarter inch this way, a quarter inch that way, another quarter inch, and then a quarter inch underneath. So there's your math. You don't really need math. You just got to figure out the logistics of it. Okay, so here's my one inch sashing. And now I'm going to attach that to the top of uh, the quilt unit, let's call it. And then the back sashing, right sides together. I mean, it is black, but it has a little pattern on it. So we'll put that right sides together and we're gonna line all that up and take it over to the sewing machine and put our quarter inch foot on and sew that seam. And notice how I always leave my clips in the wrong place, right? Oh, well, no harm. No harm, no foul, right? Okay, so we'll switch feet. And don't you just love how easy it is to switch feet? Oh my goodness, it's so fast. You just drop down that presser foot and it snaps on, hopefully. <laughs> Except when you're on camera, come on. There we go. Okay, and now we're gonna just snug that edge of my sandwich, quilt sandwich, sashing on the back, all those layers. We're just snugging that all together up against that guide on, oh, and you don't wanna do that. Yeah, you have to reset your stitch. Oh, aren't you glad that happened? Now you know that happens to everybody, not just you and your sewing room. So we get a new needle and uh, let's just take me a second, pull one out. So we have a fine stash of needles. There we go. You know, and I use our um, Triumph needles that are, I'm gonna use a sharp and uh, make sure that it's the right size, which is like an 80, 85 or 83. Okay, and I'll just insert that. Now I will tell you, I moved that camera, Sam, I hope we're okay. Let me turn around and take a look. Okay, I'm still good. All right, so I always like to use the screwdriver to tighten that up. I've learned that I'm not so great at uh, tightening that up by hand. So if I do it with the um, screwdriver, I'm better off and I get a nice, you know, firm hold on that needle because there's nothing worse than sewing along and not having the needle, have the needle loosen. Okay, so now my needle is in the center position where it belongs on the quarter inch foot. And we will just sew that quarter inch seam all the way down. There we go. I'm just gonna make sure that 
There we go. And you know, you can kind of manhandle this, right? By pushing the fabric against that guide, it really does um, give you a nice straight stitch. I often look back and see if I wiggled a little bit, and I, I did a little bit there, but that's all right. We'll live with that. So now we're going to go back over to our pressing uh, surface. <clears throat> So not only do we not want to quilt, I mean, cut, yeah, cut on our dime hoop mat, we also don't want to press on a cutting mat. So I got all kinds of mats here, right? So I just pressed open only the front sashing. See, our back sashing is still attached to the back. The excess is on the block, and only the front sashing is pressed open. So then we will get our block and we're going to place that right sides together um, with the sashing on the front. And remember, you know, this is a good time to trim that sashing. It helps with the lining up of the blocks. Now, this is just a small two unit block um, row, but, you know, as they get bigger and, you know, the ends are further apart, you might want to make sure you're trimming so that it's easier to align the edges as you go. All right, good enough. And then right sides together with, oh, of course, we're on pink on pink. The, who would have thought? Okay, so right sides together. I'm making sure that the edges of the block are attached. I, I mean, are meeting each other. I don't want to wind up with a unit that looks like that. Can it happen? It happens more often than it should. That I can tell you. So take extra care to make sure you are aligned at those outside edges. And then we are just going to um, attach the clip, line that up. And here's our other one. And this time I'm going to stitch from the top. Oh, I didn't even capture the sashing. There we go. I'm going to stitch from the top because that gives me, you know, I could keep my eye on um, the edge of the front sashing. So let's go on over and do that. Again, I have that quarter inch foot. And like I said, this is when you can manhandle it. You really want to make sure that edge is snugging up against the guide. That's why it's there. That's its main function is to hold the edge of the fabric. So use it for sure. Use it. Okay. Pretty good. Uh, sometimes it misses. And there we have it. I mean, we're going to be, when I press this, boy, that is one beautiful full sashing. No emptying it, no open area. I don't have to lay down a strip of batting. Oh, what a waste of time that is. So over here, we'll just do the same thing. I probably press it from the front first, press it open. And then uh, from the back, pull it nice and flat. If you were here and you felt this, you'd be so impressed because it, it really does fill in so nicely. Now on the quarter inch, you know, we're going to pull this over and we want to, you know, fold in a little bit on the, of that raw edge because we want to capture it in the front sashing. So a quarter, you know, you want to actually fold in a little less than a quarter inch because you know all about that scant quarter inch and all of that, right? So there we go. That's pretty good. Pretty good. And now I'm just going to drop that glue. Yeah, let's see. Anita Tannenbaum, you love this small sashing also. I do too. You know, it. when I first started this technique, I only did the one inch finished sashing. But our blocks that we were, you know, that I was designing were big, like the seashell quilt and so forth. They were big blocks, really filling a 7 by 12 hoop. And, you know, so I didn't mind the larger sashing. But then 
when I kind of advanced to some other styles, I realized that you, you needed a, just the scale of the finished look was too much. So, you know, to scale it down. Now, I've never been able or tried, I've never tried to go smaller. Like, could you trim your blocks an eighth of an inch? I don't think so. I think that would be overkill. All right, so we're going to go back one more time and we're going to stitch this down. And this time we're going to stitch with that uh, line 10 foot. And we'll get that into position. There we go. And now I have to move that needle just a little bit. And we'll stitch. Now, if you don't have uh, Elmer's glue, you know, you can most certainly, um, you can most certainly, oh, wait, what am I doing? I'm on the wrong one. Here we go. And where's my raw edge? There we go. Okay. I've already done that side. Okay. And, you know, I want to make sure that I'm going to catch the fabric. And there we go. So keep that guide of the blind hem foot right along that ditch because you want that needle to be a little to the left so it's catching the sashing underneath. And if you do it, it works out beautifully. It really, really does. Let's hope. <laughs> oh, I have quilts that have some gaps for sure, but that worked really well. A little bit of my seam allowance came out here. You know, I'm on camera. Black fabric's hard on old eyes. <laughs> I can tell you that. But isn't that fun? Isn't that fun? It's so pretty. So pretty. Let's see. Uh, okay, let's see what all your comments says. Connie Nelson, you said you bet you have one on your embroidery machine and it really works. Not sure what you're talking about because I think you're all doing really great. Um, it does, let's see. It does let you work in stages. I think, Joanne, if you're talking to me, this technique really, you know, you can get a block done and get another block done. And then later on, you piece them together. It's not that hard to do. Not that hard to do. Let's see. Um, quilt sash, sew it all together. Voila. Let's go quilt. Yeah. Oh, Marjorie, you're going to do a baby quilt. This does work really great for baby quilts for sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's see. Um, I wanted to also talk about that you can sash. Uh, let's get this little piece, this, these blocks that I stitched, right? I did it kind of, you know, this is kind of hot and heavy this morning, right? Fast. So let's, let's see. This block, this embroidery design measures, yeah, just shot about four and a half inches, right? So let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and make that a six inch, six inch block, just because I can. And so what I'm doing is I have my quilter's ruler and I'm aligning the three inch mark right in the center of that pretty medallion, right in the center. And then I can see that I have equal distance on opposite of each petal. Of course I do because you know I'm on the center, right? So then we'll just trim this off. Oh, right on my cutting mat. Did y'all see that? Goodness gracious. Right on the cutting mat. <sighs> okay. Yeah, see at home, I don't have my hoop mat anywhere near my cutting table. It's over in my hooping area. So this is uh, valuable stuff. Don't look at this as throwaway. I use batting together. I can, I'll show you that in a future broadcast. I've shown it before how I butt these together and then I have a bigger piece of batting. And this is fabulous strips for applique or even sashing. You can even use it to sash. So the next one, I'll, I'll cut my next block. Again, I'm making sure that I am centered. That three inch line is right in the center of that block. There we go. Oh, goodness. Come on. There we go. All right. So let's cut one of these out. Now, this fabric that I've quilted does not have um, backing fabric on it. So we can still sash for sure. We can still sash. So I'm just going to trim this up to show you how you would do that. And you would just sash the front 
That's all you're going to do. Now, I would be more conservative on, you know, this trimming and so forth. And there's ways to plan out the quilting that you're not uh, having so much, um, you're not having so much waste. Okay, so now I only have batting on the back, but I can sash a whole row of these blocks by placing just front sashing right sides together. And same technique, right? We'll sew it down, press it open, add the next block. And then I have an entire row. I could do my whole quilt like that and then just add the back and stitch in the ditch. People like to do that. A lot of people don't like to see um, the back of embroidery on a quilt, right? Like if you're doing maybe a tiling scene or something like that, you don't often want to see the back of a quilt block that um, you wouldn't mind this one because it's, you know, it's really pretty. It's just a beautiful one tie in one tie off that's it so that would be fine to do all the way through but some are you know some of the ones I showed you earlier that's why they have a busy back but maybe it, they would have benefited from just being quilted on the quilt top fabric the block fabric the batting and then add that uh variation you know add a backing as a whole piece of quilt yeah yeah you're loving that I cut the hoop mat mm -hmm. yeah well I didn't go too far it's only like an inch but now you can uh, watch. When you come back and watch next week, you can see she's still using that mat that she cut. And how, how long will it live, right? What batting, what kind of batting am I using? This is warm and natural. It's 100% uh, cotton. I, I would suggest when you're doing quilt as you go that you use cotton batting and not polyester because you are going to be pressing quite a bit. And if you have exposed batting, you may have, you know, melded polyester batting on your iron. So that's why I like to do all cotton. I'm also a big fan of wool batting because it's very lightweight and it's breathable and it gives a very high loft to your quilting, but it's expensive. And uh, so I kind of reserve that for, you know, special projects for sure. What about bamboo batting? Bamboo batting is fabulous. I would recommend that. I like that as much as the cotton batting. So if you have access to that, go for it. That's a great um, batting. And it's very comfortable to lay under, you know, because it breathes really well, which is really nice. So isn't that what we want? Yeah, let's see. So isn't that fun? So much fun. I love those blocks. Let's see. What about when the blocks are 15 by 15? and sashing was to be four inches to make the quilt size. Well, if your finished sashing is going to, has to be four inches. So let me just think about that for a minute. <laughs> so your seam allowance is going to be one inch, one inch seam allowance, and you're going to cut your sashing. Um, why can't I figure that out? <laughs> Come on, you ladies, somebody out there, do the math for me. Let's see. How would you quilt the back if you do the back as one piece? Well, right, Maria, that is the million-dollar question, right, which is why I don't, I don't do that technique, but lots of people like it. So what they'll do is they would, um, they would stitch in the ditch. So they'll stitch again, you know. But for me, I'd rather just get better at quilting with my embroidery machine. If you don't have a backing fabric, do you get fibers in the machine? No, I don't really have that problem. You know, this uh, this is, you know, a high quality batting. So it's needle punched, meaning it's not going to disintegrate. It's not going to come apart. It's really got some good bad, bad, uh, body to it. And in fact, when you quilt this, you only have to quilt about a hand's width apart. So this does not disintegrate into your, into your machine at all. So let's see. Um, so the math is, uh, the math, what is the math? So the math is whatever your seam allowance is, your sashing is four times that. And whatever your seam allowance is, your sashing is twice that right? Come on. I told you all a little while ago. I had it all figured out. So let's see. Yeah, because if we're doing a half inch seam allowance and our finished sashing is one inch, then our strip is two inch. So somebody wants a four inch finished sashing and um, 
So she has to cut her sashing eight inches and she's going to have a one inch seam allowance. That's a lot. Yeah, that's a lot. So you might want to reconsider that. Add another block, right? Add a wider border instead of sashing. But I don't know your project. And if you do add a sashing that is that wide, four inches wide, then consider adding, you know, a decorative element to it. Make sure, because it's going to be pretty bold, right? So, you know, add some beautiful quilting to it. Maybe you piece that, like I showed you on that seashell quilt. You want me to pull that out again so you can take a better look at that? It's right here. Let's go to the overhead cam. So here we have piece sashing. It's still one inch wide, but I pieced the strips together so that, you know, it wouldn't be as solid or as wide as its counterpoint over here. It looks like it's narrower or that I have two sashings together, but really I just pieced my sashing strip right down the middle, you know, took two different pieces of fabric, sewed it and... So when you do that math, it's just half of everything, right? Half of, so if it's supposed to be two inches is my uh, cut size, then I actually made each little piece one and a quarter inches so that when I piece them together, they finish two inches. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Okay, can I use a 12 inch block in the monster hoop to do a 12 inch embroidery design on a quilt as you go project? We don't have a 12 inch, to my knowledge, uh, we don't have a, an embroidery field that is 12 inches to do one hooping for a 12 inch block. So you would have to cut that into two different hoopings side by side probably. So you, whatever that is, yeah. Need to learn how to do those continuous waves, so fun. And easy, really easy. You know, a monster hoop, right? So, you know, like when we're quilting with our embroidery machine, the beauty of that monster hoop, and when we're using the weightless quilter, is that we never have to take the bottom frame off, right? We're just lifting that top frame and advancing our fabric. Well, it's pretty much the same when you're doing an, uh, a continuous line of applique. You know, you're just, you just have, you have the ability of lifting that top frame, advancing the fabric, and then pulling that applique strip back down. Yeah, so that'll be a fun class to do. And we'll do that in an upcoming class. All right, so if we don't have any more questions, I think we'll wrap it up for today. Next week, I'm so excited. What do we have next week? Uh, oh, well, first we want to do on the house, right? So Mary S. Larson, look at her pretty projects. She did too. She did Boho Bunny as a freestanding design. And she didn't uh, write in any details, so I'm not quite sure how she got that to happen, but it's adorable. And she also made a tray, a fabric tray, out of the beautiful Blooming Garden design. So very well done. Really, really lovely. And this week's project, or not project, but design is... Uh, the spring tree. And isn't this just lovely, this green tree? It has uh, four, it's made up of four different colors, including the trunk. And as you watch it stitch, you'll notice that it has, of the brown trim so a uh, trunk uh, we just love that yeah oh uh, mary s larson you're in the house hey that's great thanks for joining us today and so it's lace you turned it into lace very very nice really happy to hear that beautiful so glad you were here and that you um piped in and the tray was a beautiful um way to showcase that other embroidery design very well done well, next week, um, I'm super excited about next week. It's a new product reveal, and it's all about embroidered earrings, which we're going to make on uh, right under the camera. You're going to have a whole lot of fun with that. And I'm super excited to show you this new collection that is just earrings. They're a little smaller than the previous um, collection because many people don't like to wear them that large. And you can't really resize some of them because they're so um, delicate. But 
I think you'll enjoy that next week. And we also have the On the House Project next week, and it too has a spring flavor. So we'll, we'll see you then on the 24th.